Hi folks, this is Pastor Paul Frick speaking to you from my office here at Liberty Baptist Church. This is the Sunday School lesson for May 3rd. The title is Forgive. So we're looking at uh, different Christian qualities or gifts that we need to have uh, to help our relationships. So forgiveness is a really hard one. And all of us have been in situations where we've needed forgiveness. We've all been in situations where um, God called us to forgive. So um, we're going to be looking at the uh, this little lesson here today, Matthew chapter 18. And uh, this is uh, Jesus teaching about forgiveness. So we're starting in verse 21. I'm reading from the quarterly here, which is the Christian Standard Bible version or translation. Then Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times. And then Jesus responded, I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. So basically, Peter was kind of wanting to know what's the, you know, what's the limit out there? Because the rabbis of that time debated that question, and they felt like that if you forgave someone three times, that that was enough. So what does Jesus do? He takes, he takes that and he makes it a huge number, uh, 70 times 7. Well, 70 times 7 is 7 times 7 times 10. So there's three perfect numbers multiplied, there, and then there's three numbers, which is another perfect number. And so with all these perfect numbers and perfect combinations, Jesus is really trying to point out uh, there is no limit to how often you ought to forgive someone. And um, think about someone keeping track of, well, I gave you, I forgave you this time, and I forgave you that time, and I forgave you this, and I forgave you that. So, uh, okay, we got up to 490, so 491, that's it, I'm through. I mean, that's ridiculous. So, so Jesus, of course, was speaking about how we're not supposed to be keeping track and we're not supposed to be counting. So then, well, okay, you got your limit. Rather, he's saying that we need to have an attitude of forgiveness. Now, there's something very important that I want to point out here anytime I teach about forgiveness. And the first thing is forgiveness is not the same as trust. I have counseled people who have gone through horrific experiences and they work through forgiving someone, but I'll tell them that doesn't mean that you trust them necessarily. Maybe they do trust them, but that trust has to be re-earned if someone has, it has continued to do things that um, are uh, harmful to you, um, maybe even to the point of where there is neglect or abuse. Uh, so forgiveness is not the same as trusting. Trust has to be re-earned, and people that you forgive may earn that trust or re-earn that trust. Others may not. So, and that's and it's it's the onus on the person who has been forgiven to prove that they are trustworthy again. It's not the person who is doing the forgiving, but rather it is the person who has been forgiven. All right, the other thing I want to point out is that forgiveness is a process. And so if you've been tremendously hurt by someone, it's going to take you days, weeks, months, maybe even years to process your anger and your frustration and your hurt that you've had as a result of 
what someone has done to you. So you need to be patient with yourself and, and ask God to help you. Also, you need to realize that when you're in the process of forgiving, you may have to forgive someone that they're not going to acknowledge they've done wrong. Or what happens sometimes is that a mother, father, friend that hurts you tremendously, that you you need to forgive them and you forgive them after they passed away. I know that sounds a little strange, but working through uh, that process of forgiveness is very important. Okay, so now we're going to go to verse 23 of Matthew chapter 18. Uh, Jesus says, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, one who owed 10,000 talents was brought before him. Since he did not have the money to pay it back, his master commanded that he, his wife, and his children, and everything that he had be sold to pay the debt. At this, the servant fell face down before him and said, Be patient with me, and I will repay everything. Then the master of that servant had compassion, released him, and forgave him the loan. Okay, uh, 10,000 talents. We don't know if that was uh, gold, silver, but basically, here again, 10,000 is one of those perfect numbers of 100 and 100 times 10. But in other words... This was a debt he could not repay, such as the debt that we owe God for our sin. We can't repay it. There's no way that we can repay it. And what, uh, basically what uh, this master was going to do in this parable was that he would sell off that entire family and their possessions to help pay the debt. Of course, probably all of that wouldn't even amount to um, even a hundred talents. So um, so here's a debt that cannot be repaid and the king is very magnanimous and forgives him, okay? So then uh, we have uh, this next part of the parable, verse 28. That servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed uh, grabbed him, started choking him, and said, "Pay what you owe." And a hundred denarii that would be a hundred uh, days worth of wages. So, um, you know, let's say someone in our society, um, let's say they're making. A little bit above minimum wage, let's say $10, eight uh, hours a day, five days a week. So, you know, basically $400. And um, that would be uh, for one week, just $400. So, you know, think about 20 weeks worth, and that's a lot of money. So... Um, so anyway, the, the, the verses that are not shared in the lesson, basically when the, um, when the servant, uh, goes to his fellow servant and says, give me my hundred denarii. I mean, I don't know why he cared now that he'd been given 10,000 talents, but, um, he wanted that hundred, that hundred denarii. Well, that fellow servant asked for forgiveness and he doesn't forgive him. So he throws him in debtor's prison. That's what they did. And the idea is you put someone in prison and maybe some rich relative will start digging into their money and uh, pay your debt so that you can be released. So uh, the other servants tell the king, hey, you forgave this guy 10,000 talents. He wouldn't even forgive a fellow servant 100 denarii. So then the, this is where we pick up verse 32. Then after he had summoned him, his master said to him, you wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have also had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? So, you know, what we need to do is recognize 
the importance of, of forgiveness. It's, it's the most difficult aspect to me of the Christian life to show forgiveness, to have a forgiving heart. And when God, you know, God has convicted me, you need to forgive. You know, I do that. Um, I work through that process. And, uh, unfortunately, there's keep, you know, life is such that things keep happening. You need to, uh, keep forgiving people and asking for forgiveness. And I love this story about Corey Tin Boone. It's mentioned here in the lesson. Corey Tin Boone was, um, uh, put in a Nazi, uh, concentration camp, death camp. The soldiers, of course, and the guards treated her very harshly as they did all the prisoners there. And um, the, the, the guards would take off their clothes and uh, would uh, watch the women and all this. And that was what Corey Tin Boone and her sister experienced. Well, after uh, World War II was over, Corey Tin Boone I went around speaking in different churches and different places, talking about uh, how God had forgiven of her sins and how forgiveness was very important for our lives. So uh, one, su one Sunday in a church in Munich, a man approached her and stretched out his hand and said, a fine message, Fräulein, how good it is to know that as you say, all of our sins are at the bottom of the sea. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there at the concentration camp, but I would like to hear it from your lips as well, Fräulein. Will you forgive me? Well, Corey Boone immediately recognized this man's face and his voice. And it was like uh, there was this coldness all up and down her arm, and she just kind of froze. And so she had to say a little prayer, say, Jesus, help me, um, and um, help me to do this. You know, you, you give me the feeling that I need here. And so as she prayed, her hand became unfrozen, and she was able to, and she, a warmth just filled her arm and her, and her hand as she shook this man's hand and said, yes, I forgive you. And um, when you think about what she experienced, that, that took tremendous strength from the Lord for her to be able to do that. And in the lesson here, it has some ways that people can hurt or offend you. Uh, people can betray you. There are hurtful words, unkept promises, lies, bullying, um, not being included in an activity. Uh, being treated unfairly. So there's a lot of different experiences that we can have that then require us to process uh, the need to forgive that person. Or maybe we've done these things uh, sometimes intentionally, probably many times unintentionally. And so we need to become aware of those that we need to forgive we need to become aware of those that we need to ask for forgiveness from. And um, so as we think about the importance of forgiveness, uh, we are responding to God the way he's responded to us. And that's really what he's called us to do. He's called us to love one another. That's what he's done for us. He's shown us love. And my prayer is that uh, during this week that... Um, that as you reflect upon the issue of forgiveness in your life, I pray that God will bring you healing from the hurt that you've experienced. I pray he'll give you the strength to forgive. And sometimes you can communicate that with someone. Sometimes you can't because sometimes, uh, sometimes that can create uh, more abuse or uh, more opportunity for that person to hurt you. So you have to really seek God's guidance as to how to, to express that forgiveness and how to process that forgiveness. And, and my prayer is that as you forgive and sense the way that God lifts that burden off of us when we forgive, I hope that you'll sense that in your life, that God can unburden you 
And during this time of this pandemic, we continue to ask God to give us all strength and to give us the wisdom that we need to know how to be safe. And I'll look forward to sharing with you the lesson next week um, here from my office at the church. Let's uh, begin. Let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to, um, to forgive the way you forgive. Help us to love the way you love. Help us to find the, the grace in our lives to bless those around us. This, this whole question of forgiveness is really, really hard. But Lord, help us to demonstrate this in our lives. Help us to reflect your forgiving nature in our relationships. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks and have a good day.